reported in the Inside Africa column. Zambia's president dies in France. The heading was obituary. Zambia's Levi Mwanwasa. The article said in part that Levi Mwanwasa died in a Paris hospital on 18th August at the age of 59. He was the third president of Zambia and ruled the country from 2002 until his death. To many people in the region and beyond, he had come to rid Zambia of corrupt practices, especially those perceived to have happened during the reign of his predecessor, Frederick Chiluba. Give us two more examples of the correct usage of obituary, Sheila. One, a close associate of the chief executive officer of the company wrote the obituary we read in the daily graphic of last Wednesday. Two, did you read the well-written obituary yesterday of the outstanding member of the club who died tragically in a motor accident? Indeed, the articles we usually read in the newspapers as tributes should be entitled obituaries, not tributes. A tribute is defined as an act, a statement or a gift that is intended to show your respect or admiration, especially for a dead person. For example, at the funeral of the judge, a close friend paid tribute to his life and work. What is therefore usually advertised in the newspapers as obituary should be funeral announcement, not obituary, at rest, home call, transition, call to rest, moving on, call to glory, what a shock, gone too soon. Some people have explained that the use of such headlines is to take away some of the pain of losing a loved one. These are obvious Ghanaianisms. If it's simply announcing the death of someone, we should use the heading Notice of Death or Notices of Deaths. We could also use the heading usually seen in some magazines like the Rotarian if the death is being reported sometime after the burial of the person, for example. In memoriam, which means in memory of, followed for example by, with deep regret, we report the death of Rotarian X, who served Rotary International as district governor of district 9100. Or, with sadness, we report the death of Rotarian X. Now, to a point of pronunciation. The word H-U-L-L-A-B-A-L-O-O -O is pronounced Halebalu, A as in cup, not Hulabalu. And it means One, a lot of loud noise, especially made by people who are annoyed or excited about something and shouting. The synonym is commotion. For example, the students rushed out of the classroom to find out what all the hullabaloo was about. Two, excited talk, newspaper stories, etc., especially when something surprising or shocking is happening. The synonym is fuss. For example, there was a huge hullabaloo when the magazine was first published. That's all for now, viewers. I hope you found the lesson useful. Goodbye. Goodbye.